Well, if you don't believe that the job market is tightening, just look at layoffs.fyi. What you'll see there is recently there has been an increasing amount of companies laying off a large portion of their workforce, starting back probably in April with fast completely going under. And now we're talking about companies like Robinhood and other levels of startups in different stages of their series uh, and funding laying off large portions of their companies. And it's not just startups. We're seeing this in big tech too, where companies like Uber are saying that hiring is going to be a privilege. And we're also seeing that companies like Facebook are tightening up on their perks, as well as looking to only really hire mid and senior engineers while they're going through their hiring freeze. Well, that's not great for the 4 million people who graduated in 2021 who are all going to be looking for junior positions. Obviously, not all, all is data analysts and data scientists and data engineers, but still, there are a lot of people who need junior positions going into 2022. And now we're being hit with hiring freezes, layoffs, and just the signs of a slowing economy. Yeah. They are all going to need jobs. I mean, you might need a job in 2022. And the question becomes, how do you get a job in a tight labor market? Do you apply endlessly through application systems and just hope someone looks at it? Honestly, you could. And more than likely in their current situation, you're likely going to be ignored. And honestly, you might just be quickly dismayed. So let's talk about what you can do and the strategies you can take moving forward as this job market continues to tighten. First and probably the most obvious is you need to leverage your network as much as possible. First, we need to assess where you are in your you know, college career. Have you already left college and you're looking for your first job or are you just starting college out? Step one, if you're just starting college out, the goal of college is not to get a good GPA. The goal of college is to get you a job. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. So what you should be doing instead of activities focused purely around getting a GPA that is, you know, 4.0 is getting a job. And the things that will get you a job is interviewing for internships. Now, if you are 19 or 20, I think it's a great time to always be looking for internships because if you have an internship that often can easily either turn into a full-time role or at least look great on your resume to get you ready for a real job. So if you're still on the younger side and just starting college, I think try to get internships as many as possible. Um, one, it helps you understand kind of what work you like doing. And two, it creates networks. And three, it likely gets you a full-time offer at the end. So that is recommendation one for people who are newer. Now let's talk to people who've already graduated. You generally can't get internships. Most companies aren't allowed to give internships to people who are out of college. So you need to figure out other ways such as networking. And when you network, Here's what I mean. I don't mean do a cold reach out to someone you've never met before on LinkedIn. You will likely need to take two different routes. You need to look at your first level connections on LinkedIn or something similar, figure out if maybe they know someone at a job that you want to work at, connect with that person and see if they can connect you there first. That way you're not just reaching out to a stranger. There's kind of a warmish intro and it's a little bit easier um, of a situation where it's, it, no one feels like they're being asked from a random person can you give me a referral? It never feels good. You know, you're asking for someone's time and reputation. And if they don't know you and they don't even have a person that's like intro you, why should they trust you? And why should they put effort into you? So that's the first side, like try to go the route of finding warm intros to um, possible uh, referrals. Don't, don't try to go cold just yet. Now you do have the option of doing cold, but if you go cold, there is a book called jab, 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 left hook. And let me save you reading that book. Basically, it means give, 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 and then ask. If you've done nothing for a person you were doing a cold intro to, and then you expect them to do something for you, like a referral, they're not incentivized in any way to give you anything. And the truth is, even if you do give, give, give somehow to a person, they still might not give you anything. But at the very least, you've put yourself in a position that they might feel inclined to do so. What can you give? Well, there are little things. Like, let's say they post on LinkedIn a lot. Well, maybe like their post, maybe comment on their post and do it more than once. Like show that you're genuinely interested. It might not work, but it might at least cultivate some form of, of, of friendliness towards you. And two, more importantly, I think it is important to understand that when you ask for someone's time, you're asking for a lot. Time is arguably the most valuable thing we all have. So when you approach that, just think about that, you know, as you're trying to offer something, because asking for someone for 30 minutes, it's not just 30 minutes. It's not just a 20 minute cup of coffee. It's 
their time. You know, they could be spending that time anywhere else and you are asking for it and I get it. And we, we all want that first job, but just make sure you're coming at it in such a way that they don't just feel like they're being used for the situation so you can get a job. It's, it's really hard. Again, that's why I usually recommend try to go first level connections that can intro you to second level connections versus cold. Cold is very hard, but networking is probably your best option. And you can create new networks. And one great way to create new networks is starting to work on things like open source projects or joining communities. You know, we have my Discord community and there's plenty others. You can do the data engineering uh, subreddit. And that's one area you can start creating networks with people who actually work in industry, but you can also work on open source projects. And this is kind of a great way to kind of expand your network because you're gonna be working with other developers who are working on problems that you enjoy. Now, there are some things I dislike about open source because you're not paid. And I feel like, you know, especially a junior data engineer position or a junior software position or anything like that, I feel like you should be paid. You know, as you become more senior, you're probably getting paid a lot of money. So working on a fun project occasionally is fine, but for junior positions, you know, we, we, you need to get paid. But I understand that this is one way to network. You start creating communities, you start becoming part of something bigger than yourself. And you also start gaining valuable skills. You learn how to code in a larger environment. So there's a lot of benefits to becoming part of a bigger thing like open source projects. I do think that that's one other great way to network. Again, the other way is join communities, maybe go to the occasional meetup. But I think personally, a better way, at least a way that can show your technical skills is also becoming part of open source projects, answering questions on Reddit or subreddit, or maybe asking questions and, and trying to learn. Um, Cause that can become a way that people learn who you are in other ways um, and expands your network. As you're working with open source projects, you're networking. Another great thing I think to do is learn what value means to a company, because a lot of us, I think, focus on like, what certification should I get? You know, um, what technical skills should I learn? Like what will make me more interesting to a company? And the most companies, you know, all those technical skills are arguably horizontal skills. They're not necessarily growing you, um, you know, putting layers and layers on new skills in terms of like making you more useful to a company. Becoming more useful to a company and, and learning how to become more valuable means you understand what actually drives value at a company. So, you know, if you want to work for a healthcare company, what metrics are important for healthcare? because you want to be able to talk about those metrics as you're you know, networking with someone that maybe is in the healthcare analytics space. Or if you're working uh, for a SaaS company, you might be interested in learning about RevOps because you know that's some metrics that they care about. If you're in the data space, you're, you're gonna have to talk about those and understand the terminology and why they're using these words and what's important because then as you meet um, possible uh, employers or possible hiring managers, you can at least converse with them about the products or the tools or what they care about. You're not just talking about the technical bits, which is, you know, what we care about, but you're also able to show that, hey, I am a lot more valuable than just my technical skills. I actually do think like a mid uh, level engineer, even though I'm technically junior, you know, I'm thinking about the next step, not just, you know, the code, but I'm thinking about how does that drive business value? And I think that pushes you um, up the ladder. So I think that's another valuable thing. The problem here is now how do you show that one way and a very unscalable way is to talk to every hiring manager directly again it's very unscalable you're going to talk to one or two uh, hiring managers here and there another way to do it is learn how to display your skills learn how to show them like learn how to help people see what you've done so whether that's putting together a github repo or putting together blogs videos, um, putting, putting together a LinkedIn post or creating some infographics. All of this shows that, again, your skills are much more broad than just technical skills. Technical skills, again, can make you very horizontally strong. You know, you can work all across the stack and, and everywhere. But if you want to start like showing more and more skills, um, you have to figure out how do you display it? How do you communicate it? Because that shows that hey, when you hire this person, not only are they able to solve your technical problems, they're also able to communicate those technical problems. They're also able to communicate which problems you should take on and all of the other things that deal with actually doing work and not just, you know, oh no, I have to hire this junior data engineer. Oh God, I got to teach them how to do things that you'd consider very basic. Um, no, they're, they're trying to take all of this on themselves. And I think that makes you more valuable. Getting your first job with very little to no experience is already hard enough as it is. And as we go into a kind of market that clearly is pushing more for mid and senior experience roles, especially if you're talking about tech, you need to stand out. And just throwing your job down the black hole that is an ATS system is so far from a guarantee. 
making sure that you've got direct referrals through your networks, making sure that you stand out, whether it be through content or how, you know, you, you go to meetups, you, you try to practice talks, you try to create con like infographics and content that, that people recognize as your brand. That's the way you kind of win this game. That's how you have to play even at Facebook after you get hired. Like, how do you make your project stand out? So these are skills that honestly you'll find out aren't just valuable getting a job, but become valuable in the job. Because when especially there are tons of people at a company, you want to stand out in one way or the other. So learning these skills are far expanding. They are compounding. They will give you skills that don't just benefit your job search, but also ensure that you stand out inside your company. Guys, I want to wish you the best of luck and thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you next time. Bye.